So let's take a look at everybody's worst nightmare when it comes to resin printing. Well, this is something that no resin printer wants to see, and that's a failed print due to supports not holding it onto the build plate. Now this could be one of a couple of things. This mainly could be because the supports weren't large enough to actually make it stick to the build plate, or there could be something wrong with your printer. So today I'm gonna to go through some best practices and some ways to take care of your printer. So every so often we should be doing scheduled maintenance on our printers anyway, because if you're like mine, uh, my printers get a workout, they're pretty much going 18 hours or so of the day. And you wanna make sure that every so often that we're tuning them up and that way we get more life out of them. Obviously we have a failed print. So there's some stuff that actually printed on there correctly, which are some symbiote heads from the null statue that I'm actually printing now from Wicked Art. Uh, what looks like it failed was Null's, <laughs> Null's torso. So uh, I'm going to take a look at a couple things and it's kind of like a process of elimination sort of thing. So first things first, we're going to set this aside and then we're going to kind of take the, we're going to take this off of here. Now I know it's full of resin, but we're going to empty this resin out. Now I'm going to show you the way that I do it because typically people will strain the resin when they put it into the bottle. I actually do the opposite. I actually strain it when I put it into the vat and I'm going to show you why. All right, so I'm going to take this off here. I've got it loose from the build plate and I'm actually going to take this build plate off and for two reasons. For one, I'm going to empty the resin back in here because I want to check my FEP. And this takes some skill, you guys. So the reason I am not straining it is because it's been my experience in the past that whenever I get a new bottle of resin in, no matter how much I shake it up, no matter if it's been new, no matter if it's uh, never been opened before, I've found trash inside of it, dried resin, all kinds of other stuff, all kinds of issues with it. So it's caused FEP damage, uh, just recently caused a screen failure. So I had to replace a $160 screen in one of these printers. So that was not, good so what i typically do is i just strain it when it goes back into the vat so so i'm looking at my fep here and i know for a fact that there's nothing wrong with it because i just changed it out yesterday but essentially you want to make sure you get all that kind of you want to check for any types of you know dings or, or pinholes or anything like that and the way you can check for pinholes is to Empty your vat, clean it out, stick it over a paper towel, put some water in it, and you'll see the water actually uh, infiltrate the, uh, the paper towel up underneath. So I know that's a good FEP because I just put it in yesterday. So my guess is the reason it failed was because of the supports. Now another thing that you want to do each and every time that you do a print, you don't have to take your vat off, but every so often it is a good practice to take and look at your FEP or look at your screen to make sure there are no any scratches. Make sure there's no dried resin or anything like that on your screen. If there is, stop immediately and you need to get some IPA or some type of you know alcohol of some sort and you're going to want to get one of these right here. This is a plastic razor blade. These things work wonders. They're on Amazon. There are a link in my description but they're like five or six bucks for like a few of the, the holder and a few of the blades. Now what you're gonna do is, the reason you wanna use a plastic razor blade is simply because you're gonna soak this thing with IPA and then you're gonna let it set for a little bit and you're gonna scrape it off. That's gonna prevent you from scraping your screen. Now, one of the first things I would do is, when you get a new printer is, look at getting a screen protector for this. That helps a lot. Now, when you do get a new screen protector, make sure that you do re-level your bed, because if you don't, you will have problems, rest assured. But you also wanna make sure that your uh, around here is clean. Wipe it down with some IPA, make sure it's dried adequately. Now, yesterday I did a kind of a whole maintenance routine on this printer, and I still had issues with it, so that leads me to believe that my supports were bad. Make sure up underneath here, 
that there is no dried resin or anything like that. Make sure you wipe it off every so often. Um, actually, I do that every time I pull this vat off. Now, how often should you relevel your bed? Well, my best practice is after every four to five prints that I do, I go back and I relevel the bed. Do you have to? Probably not, but it's a good practice too because I'd rather relevel my bed, take those couple of minutes and do that rather than having a failed print and waste a lot of resin. So also you're gonna make sure that your tape is secure on here. Make sure that is down uh, because that means your screen is down. Uh, you put this back on here again Make sure there's no pinholes. Make sure your FEP is very clear. If you have to change this out, sometimes you just gotta change it out. Now I will tell you, if you run out of FEP screens, you can actually use a piece of clear tape to get you through your, your current print, but I don't recommend in doing that if you've got one of these handy or if you are able to access them. Always make sure that you have a good clean FEP on there. And then you just wanna make sure that your, your bolts are back on here and I just wanna make sure that they're just good and snug on there, okay? The other thing that you wanna make sure is underneath your printer, make sure it's clear of any obstruction or anything like that, any type of debris, like see there's a piece of resin right there. You just wanna make sure that, that the, the fans up underneath have adequate ventilation so they don't kill your motor uh, or do any type of internal damage to there. I'm gonna go back and put my resin back in here. Now again, the reason I do it now is because when you put it back into the bottle, I can strain it all day long, but if I'm just pouring it back in there, I'm probably possibly pouring back dried resin back into the vat. So I just strain it when I'm going in here. That way, you know, you're guaranteed to pretty much get all your trash out of your vat. Now there's something I did wrong here. You're probably saying to yourself, dude, what did you just do? Again, check yourself because I just put in, talking to you all, I got distracted and I put this in backwards. Now, I don't know if there is any certain way to put it in, but I'll always put it back there so I can read the max line. But this is how I leveled my bed. And so this is how I am going to uh, keep printing. And again, you're just going back through, wiping everything down. Now the other thing that you wanna check for every so often is, look at your linear rails, make sure that there is no obstructions on here, any dried resin or anything like that. That will score it and you'll hear it start to make a really bad noise once that comes down to print. Make sure that you have adequate uh, grease or penetrating oil on this right here. These things will get dry. A lot of it, as you can see, cakes up down there at the bottom. So make sure that that is working correctly. If not, this thing will not go up and down correctly and you will have uh, failed prints. Make sure your LCD is good and clear. It doesn't have any resin or anything like that on. Take you some IPA when it's off, wipe it down a little bit, and make sure it dries adequately. Now, it's good practice to make sure that you always keep your printer clean on the rim, on the front, underneath your FEP, uh, make sure that your linear rails are clean. Make sure these things tend to get kicked up with resin. It's also good to keep those clean as well. Now, I've only had to replace this screen one time, and that was because there was dried resin to get on the top of it, and I tried to get it off and just scratched the hell out of it. So that was an issue. But I have probably put maybe over 1,200 to 1,500 hours or better on this printer and probably close to about 2,000 hours on this one here. I kid you not. And the screens, because they're mono screens, have held up quite a bit. So this over here, this guy, he's out of commission right now because he's waiting on a new screen. And that's because uh, after about 200, 300 hours, those screens tend to go out. They're about $30, so it's not near as bad. I don't use this one much anymore simply because the only thing I could print on it is some smaller prints. So. 
there you have it guys i hope that helps a little bit uh, you keep this thing running right it will treat you right and make sure that you um, always check anytime you have a failed print do a process of elimination on it always make sure that you keep your printer up on par and i guarantee you're going to get some really good quality prints from it so that's pretty much it guys make sure that you get on a good maintenance schedule for your printer every so many prints it's a good idea to take everything kind of down take the resin out of the vat to make sure that everything is still looks right uh, relevel your bed uh, make sure that your FEP is good and just make sure that your printer is just free of dried resin or if you hear any strange noises coming from your printer when it's printing it might be time to check it out as well if you have one of these make sure it doesn't look like this this came from taking a heavy support off of the build plate and I bent it up pretty good. So you want to make sure that you don't have that. If you have that problem, throw this thing out, get rid of it. You're going to need a new one because you will score up your build plate and it's going to cause you some uh, support issues. So I hope this video helps you out guys. Remember if you like the video, hit that like button down below and also make sure you subscribe to the channel. We got some really good stuff coming up for you very, very soon. We got some really good uh, builds that we're doing and uh, we're gonna be showing them to you very soon. So until next time, see ya.